Uh, it's really a great pleasure to be here among you today, to such a distinguished and young audience. And I adore to speak to young people because you are the future of the world. You, you are the future leaders. So indeed, it's a pleasure. But uh, today I'm here because Lithuania, as Madam Chair rightly pointed out, is presiding the European Union Council. Of course, it is a challenge for a small country. But we in Lithuania, we say that small is beautiful. And apart from that, indeed, uh, we seek for uh, compromises, yeah, as Luxembourg uh, did when Luxembourg presided the European Union on a few occasions. So seeking for compromises, perhaps, it's and uh, honest uh, deal breaking. Yeah, uh, some features that uh, are particular to uh, smaller countries' presidencies. Uh, but today, let me speak about culture and uh, art and audiovisual. This is your topic of discussion. And uh, let me outline what, um, what we are doing in presence in general and in this particular, in, in this particular sphere. Uh, so indeed, it is the first time that Lithuania, my country, has taken up the presidency of the European Union. Um, it's a challenge. It is also an opportunity uh, for us to contribute a more united, uh, stronger and competitive Europe, which we think is the best way to go. So uh, over the next four months uh, that remain to our presidency, this is till the end of December, our main focus will be constructive discussions with the European Union institutions as well as member states, United Kingdom of course included. So what we try to achieve is, uh, is a smooth process of legislative, legislative process, yeah and honest and impartial broker with the involvement of all the possible st stakeholders. We think that only working together we can achieve important results. Yeah. So um, I also would like to take this opportunity to thank our Irish colleagues. Irish presidency was just before uh, the first half of this year. They also made a huge work contributing to, uh, to EU new generation programs for cultural and audiovisual sectors and the the indeed they, they achieved in very impressive projects so thank you for uh, thank you Irish colleagues and we hope that Greek colleagues and you know that Greece is taking presidency after us from the January 2014 will continue what we have done so um, in general in general the priorities of the Lithuanian presidency is uh, a greater focus on EU economy, growth and jobs, single market, financial stability. Something that is important to everybody, to all of us, to all EU countries and citizens. We say that our motto is a credible, growing and open Europe. Which is a beautiful motto, isn't it? <laughs> um, so where, what are the role of culture and creativity in this credible, growing, and open Europe. Yeah. In, in fact, uh, what I would like to do today is to highlight the role of the creative sector in ensuring smart, sustainable, and inclusive growth. That is how creative sector, audiovisual, culture, play a role in economy, in, the, in all our countries' economies. Yeah. So finally, we should stop thinking of culture as an absorber of resources, something that is the myth going on for many, many years, yeah? absorber of resources. And the governments are not very keen to spend on culture. And when the crisis arrives, it is the first cultural programs that are being cut. Have you heard of it before? I, I had many times. So um, we should change our thinking, our mindset, and think of culture and creativity as uh, role to develop more cohesive, more sustainable, and more happy society. How can, it, how can it be made? We do believe that participation in cultural programs, cultural projects, gives individuals the opportunity to express themselves, nurture the, the ability to express and to accept others' difference, as well as to develop necessary social skills. So we may say, as a conclusion, that culture is the basis of the present diversity, communality, and our identity, both on national level and on European level. 
So we may say also that culture-based creativity is the engine of our present-day economy, with the cultural and creative industries growing faster and more stable. We, again, we speak here about cultural industries, yeah? something which is, which is new, something which did not exist uh, decades ago. I may say that this sector of economy, cultural industries, they create more than 7 million jobs in the European Union. 7 million jobs. So uh, here you see the link with the economy, very, very transparent. Yeah? And the input of cultural and creative industries to economy today <coughs> constitutes up to 5% of GDP. And in some countries, like for example in the UK, it's even 6% of GDP. So again, a very, a very tangible link with the economic and financial situation. So um, <clears throat> what is going on on European Union level is the, there are discussions in various EU bodies, EU Council and EU Parliament of uh, how to ensure the long-term strategy at EU level to create to, to continue to facilitate the, the, uh, the uh, development of these creative sectors. And of course, how to ensure that they have also proper financial instruments to, to, to be able to, to develop. European Parliament recently adopted a resolution, uh, a resolution about cultural, cultural and creative industries and, uh, also, and also about the proper financing, financial mechanism. So, uh, apart from that, there are a few other initiatives that will be important during this remaining, uh, remaining four months. So, let me, let me say a few words about them. So, first of all, there is a decision, to, important decision, to establish a new union action, the, called, the so-called union action for the European capitals of culture. So, um, I would say that this uh, initiative perhaps is one of the most known within the EU because capitals of culture is something that that citizens know yeah when a city a town in uh, your country is a capital of culture so everybody talks about the city there are usually a, a variety of cultural events going on a lot of tourists coming so uh, again the development and uh, input to economy input to business is very tangible yeah so um, uh, this new, ac new initiative, Union Action for Capitals of Culture, uh, is now being discussed in the uh, Council of uh, Ministers of Culture. And, uh, um, well, we think that it will come to an end by the end of this year, uh, because uh, there are now n two new countries in line, Ireland and Croatia, that should uh, uh, participate in these capitals of culture, so they need to take all the necessary procedures to, uh, to launch, uh, to launch uh, the project in, respectively, Ireland and Croatia. Um, one more important initiative, uh, this, uh, this is called the Creative Europe Programme, which is supporting cultural and creative sectors, yeah? and the Europe for Citizens Programme, which promotes European citizenship and of course preserving the remembrance of common European history. Again, two different things, but rather important. Uh, in fact, concerning the uh, progress achieved on the Europe for Citizens program, uh, we do foresee that uh, this is a very important program. You know, Again, we, we are talking on governmental level that, well, how to, how to present European Union as acceptable to citizens. What is the problem that sometimes European citizens and European governments cannot hear each other, cannot understand each other? So this year is the year of European citizens, and uh, that is why we are talking about citizens' participation in governance how citizens' voice could be heard by their governments and by European institutions like European Parliament, for example. How citizens could present their initiatives yeah? and uh, who will take care of their initiatives to be proceeded and eventually implemented. So um, this is what the Europe for Citizens program is about. 
Again, uh, again, we are talking about more prosaic things, budgets, and then when it comes to budgets, when the budgets are always low, they're always not sufficient, they're being cut. But even having a, a rather small budget with a creative, uh, creative interpretation of that budget, people do can achieve things. And, uh, one, more, uh, one more initiative uh, uh, during our presidency will deal with cultural objects and in particular cultural objects which are unlawfully removed from the territory of the member states. Uh, this is a, a topic which has been on board since 1993. 1993 when the internal frontiers of European Union were abolished. Yeah? The cultural objects, uh, as all goods, uh, yeah? started to move around. Uh, Nobody really uh, to control the border control, as there was no border control, not, no customs control within the European Union. Yeah? So also the cultural objects which were classified in their countries and as national treasures, they began to, to move around. Uh, so again, uh, uh, there, there is a directive, uh, a EU directed on this subject, and the analysis, the, the assessment of this directive showed that the directive is very limited, and very limited means that uh, there is no even well, there is no input in fact. So the idea again is to rethink this directive and uh, to, to in a way to seek to reconcile the fundamental principle of free movement because it's fundamental. We can, cannot in principle restrict free movement of goods, yeah and the need to effectively protect national treasures. Uh, so again, um, again uh, we started discussions, uh, different member states have different opinions and, um, and it's not that easy to, to, to achieve a, a sort of united and united um, um, decision. But still, we believe that this is important and we should proceed. Um, what, what is in, inside the directive? So again, it's uh, to reinforce the cooperation between member states at the administrative level, and it means to exchange information about cultural values, cultural heritage, yeah? To use internal market information system for that purpose. And, uh, and then to make, uh, to make these cultural treasures, cultural heritage uh, movements more controlled, even within the EU territory. Well, last but not least, audiovisual sector. Audiovisual sector, which is now very much in fashion. Everybody talks about audiovisual. It's something new, it's something very, very attractive, yeah. So, um, with all the technological developments, you know that the audiovisual media landscape is changing so so quickly. So again, during the presidency, we will make special emphasis on the development of the Connect TV and to the merger of traditional broadcast services with the internet. Yeah, Connect TV, which means that TV set and uh, and internet and computer are merged into one. So again, <clears throat> under these new conditions of audiovisual sectors, we think that what is important, it's still important to maintain media pluralism and freedom under these conditions. Yeah? Media pluralism it remains, remains uh, uh, a, topic, uh, a topic of discussion, again, with all the possibilities to interact, to interactive uh, uh, exchange of opinions, and then, uh, and then the control, should, should, the, should there be any control if yes, to what extent, yeah. So again, uh, we think that we need a sort of more coordinated action on this topic on EU level. And uh, EU cultural ministers will gather in Vilnius in my capital on 2nd October to discuss specifically this, uh, this topic. Um, yeah, perhaps one more thing. Speaking about digital environment, yeah, the digital environment uh, is something um, uh, something which could be put into use, into very practical use in traditional uh, traditional schemes, like for example libraries, yeah, 
we still remember libraries, uh, huge rooms full of books. Usually it's very quiet, calm here. You come, you take the book, you read the book in the library, yeah? This is not the picture anymore. It's all, um, we are going to a digital library, yeah? to virtual library. And uh, we would say one of the most, uh, most successful examples of such digital libraries is called, maybe you know, it's Europeana. Europeana, a virtual European digital library. Yeah? And again, what is important that member states and governmental level and NGOs and, and citizens, public in general, will cooperate in creating a better Europeana, a better library. Yeah? And also it enables to broadcast the digitalized cultural heritage, that is, all cultural heritage is being put into computer yeah and then it is accessible to much more greater public than 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 a normal normal traditional library and again it is important because it, this exchange of cultural diversity is important for our citizens it's important for promotion of european values as well and for of course for maintaining for preserving cultural heritage so Again, we are ready to initiate discussions concerning the challenges, the challenges uh, for the distribution of the digital content, digital content, yeah? And uh, uh, part of it is um, digital content in films, yeah, in movies, yeah? And again, one of the key issues in this area uh, is the digitization of films, uh, and cinemas and online distribution of films using again various platforms like mobile devices like smart TV. Yeah? So um, there are two things again digitized films enables people to access to access on their smart uh, devices yeah? and again it's, uh, uh, it helps to uh, preserve an, an archive materials yeah? preservation and archives is also important here. And it's also a certain promotion of European cinema and European film industry, among other things. Yeah? So these are the outlines of what we are doing now in cultural and audiovisual, what we shall be doing uh, another four months till, uh, till, till January. Of course, uh, it does not mean that after January everything will stop. Uh, uh, there will be a certain continuation on these programs. We believe that these programs are important, they're meaningful, and we, we are ready to continue them. But before, before I finish, let me say that during our presidency here in the UK, we're doing a lot of cultural events, uh, um, a lot of concerts, exhibitions, art exhibition, design exhibition, architectural exhibition, whatever, jazz, a lot of jazz, Lithuanians love jazz, so uh, a lot of jazz singers will be coming here in London, in Edinburgh, Cardiff, Glasgow, and we'll be doing a lot of concerts, so please visit our website, it's um, uk.mfa.com. LT, LT, Lithuania, yeah? And uh, be in touch with us. Whenever you want, I invite you all, come, feel at home in our events, and I will be most happy to congratulate you there. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. Thank you.